Okay, and then one question people may come up with is how what you're proposing is different from the classical AI program of symbolic logic and so on. So that's a good question. Um, well, I think there are a number of reasons why uh, these, these classical AI programs had trouble. Uh, and in, in the work that we need to do in order to achieve System 2 performance, uh, we want to avoid some of these pitfalls. Um, we, we want to make sure that those systems will be able to generalize efficiently in, in a large scale. Um, the, the, the concepts that we want to learn need to be grounded in, uh, with System 1 in, in low-level perception and action. We, we want to keep the power of generalization of the distributed representations. We want to make sure that the kind of search that is involved in things like reasoning and planning can be done efficiently, whereas the, the, the classical approaches require a huge number of explorations of uh, many trajectories of how things could unfold or how you could combine concepts, rules, and so on. And finally, we need to make sure we build systems that can properly handle uncertainty in the world, and machine learning has been doing a pretty good job at that up to now. But we want to achieve these extra goals that we're not very doing, doing very well at, like systematic generalization that I explained, uh, uh, factorizing the knowledge, or at least some of it, that the learner is acquiring in small exchangeable pieces to get this combinatorial advantage that I've been talking about. And that includes uh, being able to manipulate variables, uh, things that you do naturally in programming and in, in logic formulations, uh, dealing with instances, um, uh, uh, that, that are associated with uh, more general categories, if you want, and uh, you know, having references and indirection, things that don't seem natural in the neural net world. But as I'll try to convince you, we now have actually built the tools for doing that in, in, in deep learning using attention mechanisms.